I have a round part with several round pockets. To machine these, from the drop down menu, I'm going to select Tool Pass, Circle Pass, and Circle Mill. The drill point selection window will open up. I need to be aware of two things when doing a circle operation. For drill points, we typically select the center of an arc. If I select the center of any of these arcs here, Mastercam will not recognize the diameter of the arc I want the circle mill to be. However, if I select the circle itself, such as this one, Mastercam will not only recognize the diameter of the arc, but also the depth because it's at the bottom. So I'm going to select this arc. I'm going to press Escape to tell I'm done selecting arcs. It tells me I've selected one point. I'm going to say OK. For my tool, I'm going to use my same 7 8 flat ML. I'm going to set the spindle speed to 6 to 8,000. I'll set my feed rate to 250 inches a minute. Because with these turkey calls, I'm typically cutting maple or oak or apple in some cases. And I'm going to leave an appropriate comment with the caps lock on. So I'm going to tell it I'm circle milling the top 3.5 inch diameter. And the caps lock is on because many older machines, when I try and load a comment with small letters, will just load a blank space. So next I'll go to the cut parameters. And because I chose the circle, the diameter field here is grayed out. That's what we want. If we'd chosen the center, that's fine. This wouldn't be grayed out. And we could enter the diameter we want to cut. I'm only cutting a few of these at a time. So I'm not going to leave any material on the walls or the floor. I'll just do it all with the one tool. The start angle tells it what angle you want the tool to sweep through as it arcs into the part. 90 is great. I'll go to roughing, activate it. I'll uncheck helical entry because we've already made a hole for the tool to come down into and I'll set my step over to 70%. In my finishing, I'll activate that and just a finished pass. I'll do one pass. Taking 50 thou is good. I won't bother to override the feed or speed. I am going to tell it to keep the tool down, however, so it doesn't lift out of the pocket and come back in. I'll double check my linking parameters. They should be good. I don't need to have the retract on. All that means is the tool will wrap it to within 100 thou of the top of the part and then feed to the depth. I do not want coolant on because it's wood. So I'm happy with all my settings. I'll apply those. The cut lines look good. So I'll select both tool paths and I'll go simulate them and verify that they're all right. So we'll run the verify simulator. Everything looks good. We'll close the simulator and we'll save our work.